Yo, what's going on guys? It is JD here back with another 2K20 video and today guys we are going to be talking about Triple Threat Offline. So yesterday I dropped a video breaking down all of the rewards, so I added up all of the tokens, all of the MT amounts, every pack you get um, and the value they have in terms of MT and VC as well and all the players, we had a good look at them as well. So if you are considering going for this thousand wins and you're wondering just how much you're going to get for your troubles, be sure to check that video out because it will explain everything in pretty damn good detail. And of course, you do get the vault as well. Now, I've played my eight games. I haven't got the vault open once, but I'd imagine in a thousand wins, you should be getting it at least once or twice, you'd hope anyway. So you are going to get extra uh, rewards along the way as well. So in terms of an actual grind of a game mode, I definitely, definitely think it is worth it. Now, the initial milestones, the ones that I'm going to be going for early on, so you can see I've got eight wins at the moment. I'm definitely going to be going for these 15 wins just to get this Gerald Green. And then after that, we'll probably go up to 25, stay there for a bit after getting the Eastern Conference pack, because then you have quite a little way. Um, you get 15 wins and you only get one pack. Um, other than MT and tokens, so that's not great. So I think 25 is a good ceiling to go to early on. And then, of course, whenever you get the motivation, come back into it. You get a Deluxe League pack here, which is quite nice. Ruby Darius Miles isn't too bad, is an Evo player as well. And then you come up here, you get starting to get some good amounts of tokens and some Diamond, diamond Consumables packs as well. So you get four of these in total, which is nice. Uh, so at 75 wins, you get a Diamond pack, which again could be a Diamond contract, which I believe... Uh, well, actually, haven't looked at the value this year, but last year they were, of course, like 20, 30k, and it looks like they're about the same this year. So if you manage to pull one of them, uh, you are looking very, very pretty. And of course, shoe cards in terms of the Nikes, I assume, are still going to be the most expensive ones this year, and they are, by the looks of it, all around 20k. So if you pull a decent shoe, you're looking pretty, pretty as well. Now, in terms of the actual lineups that you want to be running with, this is the lineup that I'm currently running with. So we've got uh, the Evo Dwayne Wade, we've got T-Mac, the uh, starter pack one, and we've got George Murasan in there as well. Now, T Dwayne Wade is only in there because he is an Evo card. Like, I wouldn't have him in there if uh, I actually needed to get these Ws because he isn't the best, but... When he evolves, obviously he will become a much better player. T Mac, on the other hand, on the other hand, on the other hand, is absolutely fantastic, and he's exactly the type of player you need for this game mode. And the same can be said for George Murasan as well. Now I did use Shaq for a little while. I mean, they're both absolute beasts, both so big, so so heavy, and so strong. Um, and that's pretty much all you need. Someone who's going to be down in the post can bully people around with strength of 92 and 99. So they're going to back down everyone. And the beauty of it is that the CPU doesn't always generate a center. And most times they don't actually get a center. They have like three guards or small forwards or whatever. So they don't even come with powerfuls a lot of times. So if you have someone as big as George Murison down there, you're going to be getting every board and you're going to get pretty much a guaranteed score every single time down. Now, if we didn't have Dwayne Wade in here, I would probably have Eddie Jones just for the nice shooting, nice and quick, and good driving. Basically, you always want to have these two guys as slashers. You don't really want to have to focus on being a shooters because, from what I've had, shooting, of course, is very, very temperamental at the moment. And yeah, it's definitely better to rely on going to the basket, getting easy twos rather than living and dying at the three point line. So, if you get a lineup like this, let's go into a game and let's see what our opponent is going to be. So they're going to get Grant Hill, they're going to get Brian Scott and Dan Marley. And again, there we go. So we've got three, uh, two shooting guards and one small forward. So George Murasan is going to absolutely bully whoever we get matched up against. Doesn't matter which one of them out of the three it is, he's going to absolutely destroy down low. And of course, when the game gets later on or if you get uh, like one of those Galaxy Opals, David Robinsons, if you've got a post god, even someone like Joel Embiid uh, would be great in this. If you've got someone with great post moves, you're going to be able to do it every single time down. So you're just going to need the 12 scores to get the 20, no wait, 11 scores to get the 22 points required. Uh, so on defense, we've got George Murasan against Grant Hill. Uh, yeah, not going to be a matchup that we're going to struggle with at all. We're going to come inside. Dwayne Wade is going to get a block there. Um, and then George Murasan is going to be jumping around and they're going to get the first bucket of the game. Now, on offense, what you want to do, it is super, super easy. Just quick isolation. Quick isolation. Then we come down here, we do one crossover and we get the blow by animation. And T Mac is going to go 
and brick it, of course. But we get the rebound uh, and it gets the put back to go. But usually you just get the blow by and you go straight past. Now on defense, you can put in settings if you're going to struggle, if you think you're going to struggle. Uh, so stay home is obviously always great for uh, triple threat because people are a little bit prone to running away from their man, which is, of course, pretty frustrating. Go for steals as well, as I just demonstrated there. Uh, it's very, very easy to get steals in this game mode. Now, of course, the difficulty does change as you go through up the levels. Throughout the levels, uh, go throughout the levels, <laughs> it does change. So these early ones might be on a difficult difficulty. A different difficulty. Wow, I really can't talk today. Uh, there'll be a different difficulty than what you might get when you're getting up high towards the thousands and thousands of wins. Right, let's try that again. So quick isolation, go over here, we go for a crossover, and we just get the breeze by, and we go straight to the rim, and we get the green light on the layup. So T-Mac is an absolute prime example of a player that you want to be having. If we go and have a look at his stats, what you need is someone, of course, who's got great shooting, mid-range, and three-pointers are fantastic. But driving layup of a 91, that's definitely a key stat. Driving dunk of an 86, again, key stat. A draw foul, 87, and great ball handling at 87. And then we come down to the speed. You want to have a nice and quick player. So T-Mac coming in with 91 speed, 90, no wait, 84 speed for ball, and 87 acceleration. 91 vertical, of course, helps with the dunk. So he is a prime example of a slasher that you want to have on your team. Of course, he can do a bit of everything. He's definitely a player you want to have. Like I said, if you have two of him out there, you're going to be winning every single game, which is, of course, the goal, you don't really want to be doing too many uh, replays on Triple Threat Offline. You should really be winning every single game. To make the games go quicker, I have been letting the AI score pretty much uh, every time down. I haven't really been playing defense because it does make the games go quicker. There we go again. T-Max straight round, and there we go with the first acrobatic dunk, which basically we get every time down. Uh, and, of course, he gets his takeover nice and quickly. Um, and then that just makes things so, so much easier. And then you can go for like a three. There we go. George Murasan getting steal now. We'll give it up to T-Mac. And we go with a 360 between the legs. Very nice indeed. So you should be averaging about five minutes per game on this game mode. You really shouldn't be taking longer than that. Um, like I said, I usually just let them score. Just let them score. Ideally, probably not threes. But as long as they're just scoring twos, uh, it should be easy enough. T-Mac again going inside. Green light on the layup. And again, he should be getting his takeover pretty quickly. So yeah, I'd usually just stick with George Murasan. Just come down here and just camp out, really. <laughs> just wait for them to score. It gets the games done a lot quicker. And at the end of the day, as long as you've got one score up on your opponent, you're going to be getting the win uh, regardless because you're not going to be getting stopped. Or you shouldn't be getting stopped anyway. So again, quick isolation. Oh, we haven't got the crossover. But even just a hezzy move, we go straight up. And we're even 79% contested because of his great driving layup. Uh, rating, we can go straight through and get that one to go. Again, just come off him, just let them score, or Team Mac can come over and get the block if he wants, but at the end of the day, if you just let them score, it's easy enough as it is. Now, if you are actually struggling with this, oh, hang on, let's go back here, uh, you can, of course, put in some settings, I believe. Can you put in settings? No, you can't, actually. Uh, so this is all you can do, so you can just call the ISO and a couple of other plays, but ISO is pretty much all you need. Straight round, again, with the layup to go. 14 in the game for Tracy McGrady. So it is going to be a hell of a grind if you want to get up to those 1,000 wins, of course. Um, you're looking at around, like I said, five minutes per game. There's another between the... Wow, <laughs> his dunks are ridiculous. And his takeover there, the sharpshooter one. So yeah, five minutes per game. So you should be able to get through about 10 games per hour, uh, which is, of course, not great when you think you've got to get 1,000 of them. But it's good to know roughly how long it is going to take you to get out to those 1,000 wins. It's going to take a lot of hours, that is for sure. Right, can we get a three-pointer to go for T-Mac for the win? He's going to brick it, that's a shame. But yeah, it's really cool to know exactly what you're going to get and exactly how long it is going to take. Obviously, each game is going to vary, um, and each game is going to vary in terms of the amount of MT that you get at the end of it. But overall, it is pretty much the same, and every game is going to be exactly the same for you as a player. Just coming down, doing this crossover animation, getting straight to the rim, every time down, uh, and it's super, super easy. You could, of course, do this while just abusing the post. So instead of coming down with your shooting guard, just chuck it down to your center, do a drop step, do a post fade, whatever you want, um, and you'll be able to get that to go as well. Uh, and there we go. We get 300 MT for that. Damn, that's actually pretty good. I was uh, expecting about an average of about 200, but 300 is very nice indeed. And we'll see, again, if we can get this vault to open up. Like I said, it's been locked every game for me so far. But I've heard that it's roughly like one in five chance of getting it to go. I've seen people play like 25 wins and they say they've got it five times. So that's a good average to go off of. 
And let's see if we're lucky enough to get it in today's video. It would be nice, and we do get it. All right, let's go. The first time we've got it to open, and we are going to get 10 tokens. Damn, that is sick. There we go. So that is a really, really nice bonus for us there, and we get the free agent pack to go with it. So 10 tokens for that W. That's fantastic. So if you get that, like, 10 or so times throughout the entirety of this, if you get the tokens one, that's an extra 100 tokens on the already like 600 or so that you get for completing all 1,000 wins. So that is super, super nice and something to keep in mind. So definitely a game mode that is worth grinding out. Let me know down below, guys, if you've already made a start on Trevor Threat Offline, how many wins you've got and how many times you've got that vault to open and what rewards you've got from it. So as usual, guys, please like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Peace.